Today we're going to go through the process of suturing a laceration. A laceration um, is just a cut that is in the skin and requires suturing for the edges to come together and heal well. The first step in this procedure is to verify the patient that you are going to do the procedure on. Usually patients in the hospital have an armband on them. Our patient here has an armband that says his name is James and his medical record number is 123789 and his date of birth is 12-17-1976. The next thing you want to do, especially when there's an awake patient, is explain to them a little bit about how the procedure will go. So I would explain to James that I'm going to clean the wound that he has and then I'm going to set up a sterile field and then suture the wound closed um, so that it heals well. I'll numb the skin around the edges, which we're not going to do today, but if this were a real patient, you would want to use some anesthesia, some lidocaine, so that they don't feel each needle going through the edges of the skin. So once I've done that, I need to then check and make sure I have all the equipment I need. The equipment you need to suture a laceration is obviously you need suture. You need some surgical instruments in order to pass the suture through the skin. You need a sterile field, and you need some setup for yourself, which is a hat and a mask and gloves. I'm gonna put on a hat. This is to prevent any hair from falling into the field um, and getting incorporated into the wound. You're gonna also wanna wear a mask so that you're not breathing directly onto the wound or sneezing on it or anything like that. So I'll put on my hat and mask. I wear large glasses, so these serve as eye protection, but if you don't wear glasses or if your glasses are small, you'll want to also put on eye protection for this procedure. In case you do get any of the irrigation or blood splashes into your face, you don't want it to get into your eyes. So now that I have that on, I'm gonna do two things before I, um, before I scrub my hands with the sterile scrub. I'm gonna open up my gloves so that I can put them on later. I'm gonna open my gloves on a flat surface in front of me. I'm gonna touch only the paper. I don't wanna to touch the gloves with my dirty hands. I'm opening up the paper. And now I can put those gloves on after I wash my hands. So for this demonstration, we're going to use silk suture. And with my dirty hands, I'm gonna just open the suture onto the sterile field. Right now, the suture in its package is sterile, and I'm only gonna to touch that with my sterile gloves. So now I've opened my suture, I've opened my gloves, I have the instruments I need on my sterile field. I'm gonna wash my hands. And now that I've washed my hands, I can put on my sterile gloves. And pick up your glove, place your fingers inside. And my other glove. Have these all on. I'm ready to begin my procedure. So now I come back over to my sterile field and I can now open up my suture that I'm going to use. And prepare to suture this wound. I'm going to pick up my needle driver and I'm going to load the needle onto the needle driver. I can set that on my sterile field. And now I'm gonna set up the sterile field over the, over the patient, over the actual laceration. So I'll pick up my blue drape, that you all have one as well. It has a hole in the middle. I'm gonna place that over the laceration that we're going to sew. So that, that is right in the middle of our sterile field. Now I'll come back. And with my dominant hand, I'm going to hold the needle driver. I'm right-handed, as most of you are. I'll hold the needle driver with my right hand. Usually put your thumb and your ring finger inside the holes of the needle driver, pointing your index finger towards the end. It gives you better control and this ability to twist your hand around. So this is how I hold my needle driver. The way that you're going to pick up your needle, you can see here, is that I have my needle loaded at the very end of the instrument with the tip of the needle facing away from my, the palm of my hand and the suture coming backwards here. I've hold, held the needle basically right in the middle of the curve of the needle. So there's equal amount of needle in the front and in the back. That gives me the best control. With my non-dominant hand, I'm gonna pick up the forceps 
These are what we're going to use to hold the edge of the skin to stabilize the skin as we place the suture. So my first stitch I'm going to place on this incision is going to be near the edge of the incision, about a centimeter away from the edge of the incision. So I first grasp the skin edges with the forceps in my non-dominant hand, and then I rotate my dominant hand, my right hand, so that the palm is facing down, and I can place the tip of the needle on the right side of the wound edge, and I'm going to enter the skin perpendicular to the skin. You see how that tip of the needle is really perpendicular to the skin? Basically, the force is going straight down to the floor. I'm going to then push straight down to the floor and pierce the skin, and then rotate my hand so that the tip of the needle now comes out the center of the wound. I can then let go of the skin with the forceps and hold the tip of the needle to stabilize the needle as I push it the rest of the way through. I'm going to hold on to that. And then I'm going to re-grab the needle with the needle driver and pull it the rest of the way through. And I'll leave about a three centimeter tail of suture as I fold it through. I'm then going to re-grab my needle. Now I'm going to repeat the process on the other side, except for it's a little bit different. I'm going to pick up the skin with the forceps, just like I did on the other side. And now this time I'm actually going to put the tip of the needle inside the wound and I'm going to pierce the skin again at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to push through this time horizontally and then twist my hand and pull the needle through. Again, using the forceps to grab on and stabilize the needle and then re-grab with the needle driver to pull this all the way through. So now you'll see what happens here. As I pull this through, there's a couple things you notice. That where the needle enters or where the suture enters on the right side of the wound and where the suture exits on the left side of the wound are roughly equivalent. They're about four millimeters away from the wound itself. And they should be straight across from one another. It looks like I've gone slightly higher on the left side, and that's okay. Um, but they should be roughly right across from one another. The next part is tying the knot. So I'm going to take my needle driver in my right hand, my dominant hand, and place it directly over the laceration or the incision that's there. I'm going to then hold the suture in my non-dominant hand, and you can see I've dropped the needle. The needle is just laying on the drape right here. You have to be careful this needle does not come off of your drape, off of your sterile field, but it's okay to have it just laying on the sterile field. Place the instrument in the center of the wound. The first knot that you're going to tie is called a surgeon's knot, and that is that you wrap it one time around and two times around the instrument. You're going to then turn your hand, open the needle driver, grasp the short tail that you left yourself, and now slip the loops off of the instrument and pull the tail to the opposite side. So you notice the tail started on the right side of the wound, now it's on the left side of the wound. Pull that nice and tight, adjust the tension, let go of the strand, the short strand, place your instrument back in the center of the wound, wrap one time around for the second time, grab the tail, and again, slip the loop off and pull onto the opposite side. I'm going to do this two more times for a total of four ties. The first one was at surgeon knots. The other three are just one time around. Now I'm going to lock the needle driver onto that short end. Transfer the needle driver into my left hand where I'm still holding onto that long end that has the needle still on it. I'm going to grab the scissors with my right hand and cut the tails of this. Both together, they're nice and even, about five to eight millimeter tails. Sutures are things that you have to take out later, so you don't want to cut very short tails. You have to leave the tails long enough so that you can pull them out. I'm going to do the same thing again about a centimeter away from my first knot. So I'm going to go through this again slightly faster, so you'll see the same idea. I'm going to grab the edge of the wound, place my needle in pushing directly down towards the floor, perpendicular to the surface. I'm going to pull this out and pull through so I have about a three centimeter tail. Grab the left wound edge, place the needle into the wound, moving horizontally now and twisting your wrist so that the needle comes out across wound. Pull through. This is a small wound so you can see sometimes the tail of my 
uh, suture ends up into the center of the wound, that's okay. You just have to make sure that before you tie that it's hanging free like that. Instrument into the center, wrap two times around for the first tie, grab the tail and pull the tail to the other side. You can see sometimes the suture does get stuck on the needle driver and that's okay. You just have to kind of wiggle it until it comes all the way off. One throw on the second. And last high will also be one throw. Move the needle driver into your left hand. Grab the sutures or the scissors with your right hand and cut a five to eight millimeter tail. And we'll do this one more time. This will probably be the fastest one. Re-pick up your forceps, grab the skin edge, 90 degree angle, directly down to the floor, twist your wrist, and pull the needle through. Grab the left edge of the wound, needle into the center, twist your wrist, pull the needle through leaving behind a short tail and instrument tie. Now, as you look at the wound, you'll see this first one is a little bit loose. You can see that the wound is not completely approximated. So in a real patient, I would probably go back and place a suture right next to that one to bring it together a little bit better. But the second and third one are nice. The skin edges are well approximated. The important thing after you do any procedure is safety of yourself and the staff around you. So you're going to take your needle and make sure you go to a red sharps container and dispose of the needle yourself safely in the sharps container. And that concludes the procedure. Thanks for watching this video. Do you want to learn more or become certified in this skill? Just visit us at simrated.com.